Welcome here at One Touch Ministry, second our home gathering, where our episodic overseers are Pastor Shannon and Prophetess Nadija Young, and the campus minister is myself, Minister Henry Jackson. So you were going to uh, start the order of service. So you were going to ha uh, have have a reading of scripture from uh, Brother uh, De Delantez Owen. Um, okay, I'll, today I want to be reading Isaiah mm. 27 through 28 by King James Version. Okay. They shall be off. The women came, come and set them on fire. It's for it, for it is a people of no understanding. There before he made them will not have mercy on them, he, and he will, and he will that form them. They, sh they will shoot, renew them. No favor, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall be shall beat off off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one. O ye children of Israel, and it shall come pass in one day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which they, I mean, which were ready to perish in the land of Azrael and the outcasts in, in the land of G Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the Holy Bible Mount at Jerusalem. Um, woe to the crown of pride to drink, to drink of arrow, arrow room, those generous beauty is a fading flower which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with. Okay, so we're gonna uh, gonna uh, start. Prayer. I'm going to say, yeah, dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for bringing us uh, we're together in unity. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for bringing us together, uh, uh, get, putting us in our right mind, uh, putting us, uh, uh, allowing us to wake up this morning and to be able where to, to, to see uh, our loved ones' faces, that we have joy in our hearts and that, that we have joy in our spirits and that we are brought together in unity uh, according to your word. And Father, I do thank you for everything that you've done for us, for caring for us, for feeding us, for clothing us, for bathing us, and for, all, for, for everything else. 
um, that, that you have planned for us in, in the future. In the wonderful name of Jesus, let us start saying in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, any, any, anyone have their own prayer that they want to say? Yeah, go on to come. Thank you for our laying down last night. You blessed us to make it through the night. Invited early this morning, you touched us with your divine finger. Well, open our eyes and behold, it's a wonderful day. It's the day you had made, you said to rejoice and be glad. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us, strengthening us when we are weak and build us up when we are torn down, and prop us up on every leading side. We thank you, Father God, for the angels being with the sick and the shedding all over the world. We thank you, Father God, for being with Kat as she go through her situation and hoping that she make it through and be well taken care of. I know she is in your hand, Lord, and bless her and keep her and let us be aware of what's going on with her. Lord, we just want to say thank you. He's not the best and we ask in your son Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh no, no, we we're yeah, we're in yeah, we're in the uh praise and uh worship part of the service now. So anyone have a, a song that they wanna sing? Come on, let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Every prayer into our God, every spring of worship, I wanna call. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Is to our God. Every hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Man. Yeah, we going yeah, uh, yeah, we gonna gonna move to testimony service. Um, yeah, I just want to give my testimony. I thank the Lord for waking me up and putting me in my right mind. For uh, g- giving me a opportunity to see another day, um, yeah. I also, uh, thank the Lord for for giving me strength for uh for Friday or Thursday, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I also thank the Lord for giving you know the 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 whole family strength, you know, to be able to cry and to be able to you know celebrate afterwards and. You know, no, I do. You know, want to say, uh, I, I praise the Lord for for my mother and her health, and you know, and and, and doctors still giving, you know, great reports. So I'm happy for that, and you know that the Lord do on continue blessing, you know, with the rest of my family. And thank so, you for being with my, my daughter, bring her through her situation. Like I said, be with Kat, bring her through. You been, thank you for blessing Jane to make it through here so far. Lord, we just thank you. We know we are serving. Mighty God, we serve. I don't care what other folks say, but I know I serve a a God. And like I said, if you believe and have faith, you you'll be okay. Receive this help or your strength. And just keep keep on praying and thanking God for one day at a time. Don't ask for no whole lot, there's one day at a time. And sweet Jesus could hear you and he'll answer your prayer. Believe that he do hear and answer prayer. Because he had been there for since 2013. Answer my prayer. To bring her through. Every the more I get up, she got to smile on her face and, and, and look at the TV. But I know he had brought us through. Yeah, and thank you for being with, with, with me when I was his grandmother's death and, and uh her go, her home going and he chased me with his family, hadn't been around him in so long until he probably didn't even know who they had him was, but 
He made it possible for them to connect together Thursday and keep keep them connected, Lord. If it ain't if it ain't all the time, one day at a time, it doesn't matter. As long as you see him and be thankful and grateful that you you connected with your other side of your family. And that's a blessing. Is uh, any uh, body else have, have a testimony that they wanted to yeah, give? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead and say. It. Okay. So just like my uncle me said um, about uh, my great grand grandma funeral, on uh, how she passed, I met um, a whole bunch of people on my other side of the family, and just like. Um, just like how my dad had a past. It was hard. It was a hard going on how we was coming through. And I miss all the other people that I had on my side that passed. And I would pray for them every night and every day, in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the noon. Because God have us here and and he have us here for a reason. He, he will not let us go or let us down. God love all of us in this room. My grandma Ruthie, my baby sister Miracle, my big sister Kamari, my uncle me, Corey, me, my uncle Ben, Granny, and everybody in the world. He loved them. He go help through the struggle. He go help through everything, and that's all I gotta say. Amen. To my heavenly Father, mm -hmm. I just thank God for healing me. You know, and I can sit here and say, people don't know what I've been through. Right. And I've been through three major surgeries, but I'm still here, and I thank God for open up my eyes to see another day. He said, this is the day that the Lord has made. He said to rejoice and be glad in your name. He said, if your people were called by your name, he said, humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. Father God, I just thank God for allowing me to see another first Sunday in December. I thank you for my mother, my sister. I thank you for my nephews, my nieces. I just thank you for everybody because we we living in a time where things is so corrupt until we don't know which way to turn. But we know God is in control. He created the heaven and the earth. I just thank God for what I've been through. And I thank God for healing my anatomist. Amen. Amen. So for all of those know who do have your Bibles, uh, you were going to go into the sermon part of the service. So yeah, yeah, I'm going to be reading from the, I'm going to be preaching from Luke, the, the, the book of Luke chapter 15, uh, verses 11 through 24 reads here that once they was this man who had two sons. So uh, it didn't say one day the younger son came to his father and said, father, Eventually, I'm going to inherit my share of your estate. But rather than waiting until you die, I want you to give me my share now. And, and so the father uh, liquidated assets and divided them. Uh, and a few days passed, and the younger son uh, gathered all his wealth and set off on a journey to a distant land. Once there, he wasted everything he owned on wild living. Say he was broke and a, and a terrible famine struck that land. And he fell desperate, hungry, and in need. So he got a job with one of the locals who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. Said the young man felt so miserably hungry that he wished he could eat the slop that the peas were eating and he, and he felt that no one gave him anything and and so he had this moment of self reflection and he's uh, questioning himself in the situation that he's in and he's saying uh yeah what am i doing here 
to uh, back at home where at least my father uh, hired service and had plenty of food. So why am I here starving to death? In verse eighteen reads, and and it said, and he and the scripture said that I, that he got up and returned to his father, and he said, "Father, have I done? Father, I have done wrong, wrong against God and wrong against you. For for I I, I have forfeited uh, any rights to be treated like your son." But I'm, but I'm wondering if you would treat me as one, one of your hired servants. And so he got up and returned to his father. So the father looked off in the distance and saw the, the young man returning. So he felt compassion for his son and ran out to him. And he hugged him and he embraced him and he kissed him. And verse 21 reads, and the son said, Father, I have done a terrible wrong in God's sight and in your sight too, for I have forfeited any right to be treated as your son. Said, but, 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 but the father turned to his servant and said, quick, he said, bring the best robe that we have and put it on him and put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. And so, um, okay, and it said, because my son was dead and is alive again. So he was lost and has been found. And so they had this huge party. And so what, what today, uh, scripture, well, what the title of today's scripture is, uh, there, uh, a steward, Ship in in relationship, stewardship in relationship, and so and so when we normally think of uh, stewardship, yeah, we think of tithing, which is so uh, that would be referring to the book of uh, Malachi three and ten, where it says, "Bring all the tithes into the storehouse." And so if we was raised in and about the church, then we all heard that uh, one form or another. But it says here that tithing uh, is a part of being a steward. But however, but uh, but it is more than that. For it, uh, a stewardship is defined as is a careful responsibility, managing of something entrusted to one's care. And in other words, it's managing and caring for things that belong to someone else, uh, like a manager or an agent or a overseer. But however, uh, biblically, yeah, we're talking about you know, a Christian type of a steward. And so this is referred to as the practice of selflessly managing everything that we have. And so this includes our talents, our time, our money, our relationships, and our health for God's glory. And so within this scripture we were just re uh, we were just reading, um, it it is a story of a young man, uh, uh, wa uh wanted to leave home, uh, from his father. Uh, but we're not sure why he wanted to leave home. Uh, may maybe he left home because he felt like that that he's grown and he's you know old enough to go and to go you know live his own life. So technically, uh, where the young man was asking his father for his his allowance uh, for his inheritance, and so. Uh, so, so the father, you know, uh, did what he did and gave him his his inheritance, and he sent them off. Um, but as the scripture, as the story tells on, that the son, you know, thought that, you know, you would ever thought that that was in his head about, you know, what it is to make it out there on his own. That he found out that it was worse than how his father. You know, it was actually treating him inside the house. And so, uh, and so it, it got so bad to the point to where he was 
working a job that was too less for him to even afford even you know the uh i, I want to say decent food inside his mouth and so what do do, do we get from this lesson here particularly is we understand that the steward being the steward from this young man point of view is realizing his relationship with his father. And so him understanding that he had a better uh, living situation uh, with a right such with a relationship with his father more than he did when he was trying to go out and do things on his own. And he found out it was more harder than what it was. And so and so most of us, you know, don't understand that, you know, God can bless us through, you know, stewardship. And this part of the stewardship is about you learning your relationship that you have with someone. And so understanding that even though, you know, that uh, and so th this relationship was about uh, uh, him just being a son to his father. And so, where to any children that's, you know, I want to say being uh, disobedient to their mothers or fathers or, you know, their parents or guardians. Uh, yeah, I do want you to understand that that when, when you are being, you know, uh, 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 I want to say submissive to your adults, then you are valuing your, your stewardship with your, you know, uh, parents. And so, where the Lord's, uh, where the Lord, uh, will uh, honor you for doing that. And so here, this young man didn't realize that, you know, he, he, he had it way better off being at home with his father, you know, even though his father may tell him what to do and tell him to clean up his bed, you know, tell him to go to school and do your homework. And, but instead he felt like we, we, uh, you know, it, it, because I'm older, because I'm more mature now, you know, you I can go out there and, and I, I can go make my own, you know, stuff happen. And so as his father, you know, released him and his father wanted him to see for himself and understand that, that what you had here was way better than what you had out there. And so he, he didn't find that out until he got out there. And then he began to, I want to say, doubt himself. As as far as thinking that now since he came out this far, that he think that that his father that doesn't want him, and so, you know, one of the, and and so you know that was his him feeling guilty, and actually realizing that you know what he did, you know to him he just realizing now that he was wrong, and so when he went to his father and he said to his father that, you know I don't r really deserve being your son you know, anymore because, you know, because I've acted grown. But however, his son or his father looked at him and he told him, you know, that I for forgive you. And so with that, he he he, he had hugged him. He, he embraced him. And then sure said he embraced him. He hugged him. He kissed him. And, and more than that, he went and got him a robe and he put it on him and he put a ring on it and gave him new shoes. So he, so he clothed him again and he, you know, threw a big feast for him. And so the, the last thing what he said was, the last thing what he said was this. Um, what he said, um, oh, so he said, go get the fattest calf and a butcher it. This is verse 23. And, and so let's have a feast and celebrate. Because my son was dead, which is in other words, meaning, yeah, he, yeah, he was disconnected from me or, you know, no, he did separate himself from me, but now that he is alive again, which means now he came back to me and now he was willing to reconnect with me. And so say so he was lost and was, and has been found. So they had this huge party. And so, so his father was excited that his, his father, you know, had, uh, his father was excited that his son had enough sense to come back home and to realize his, his relationship, uh, 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 with his father. And so, um, 
And so we're with, within this being said, yeah, God, you know, really want us, you know, what's a value are re relationships because within those relationships, just like our relationship with Jesus, when we have our relationship with Jesus, yeah, we have healing and deliverance and all these other things that we have that's available to us because of our relationship with him. And so uh, 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 there's no difference between us having a relationship with our mother or our father or our cousins or our uncles or aunties. And because when we have those relationships, right, then we have, you, you know, all of the benefits that comes uh, along with it. And so, yeah, we want to start, you know, uh, valuing the, those relationships. And we do most definitely want to uh, respect those people that we have those relationships with. Yeah, I'm going to read to you the sevenfold blessings. Number one, I speak blessings of health for you and your family. So number two, I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. Number three, I speak blessings of peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. N number five, I speak blessings of comfort to any person that is hurting, any person that is lonely, any person that is breathing, or any person that is confused. I also speak blessings of finances, of debt, debt cancellation, of, of prosperity, and of empower and of economic empowerment to all of God's people according to His riches and glory. And number seven, I speak blessings of anointings and promotions in your life to complete your assignment to move forward in your purpose. Benediction. Um, so if you have your papers with you, okay, okay. I finish, uh, if you want to find it, it's in, in uh, Numbers chapter 6, uh, verse 24, 25, and 26. It say, may God bless you, may God keep you, may God smile on you, may God gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper.